everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. So it's been a couple of weeks since I last brought you a Friday Sews video. I just got really busy last week so I didn't get a chance to film unfortunately. So I've got quite a bit that I want to share with you today. I'm excited to show you what I've been getting up to over the past two weeks as I feel I've accomplished quite a lot to be honest so that's good. Um, so I'm going to get straight stuck into what I've been getting up to then. So firstly I finished the little crochet um, wrist warmers for Thomas as he requested some and I just basically made them shorter and then just made the bit around the finger section just slightly narrower because they were quite big I didn't really size down appropriately for a child um, but he's happy with those and he actually wore those to school one day I didn't think he was going to wear them out but um, yeah he was quite happy with that and so I'm really pleased with how they turned out and then Harry did request um, for a pair as well but I said are you really sure that you want some or is it because you know Thomas has got some and I don't think he really wanted them so I've not bothered making him any um because I just didn't want to waste them so at least Thomas is using those so that was my first sort of project that I got finished secondly I have been going through my work in progress pile again um the very first video that I did for Friday Sews, I actually went through my work in progress sort of basket that I had sort of sat in the corner here. And I've kept that downstairs where I've been keeping all my sewing bits and bobs and my machines and things so I can keep dibbing into it. And I finally got the Sew Over It Audrey top made up, which is what I'm wearing right now. And I didn't actually print off the pattern instructions to make this top. I just followed the online tutorial that Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door has done on her YouTube channel. And it's a brilliant sew along. It's really, really straightforward to follow. She's done a marvellous job with it. And she also shares how to make a slight alteration to the neckline so that it lays flat. And as you can see, I think that that alteration has worked really well for me as well. I'd not made this pattern in the past, so I wasn't sure if I would have had an issue or not with it, to be honest, but I thought I'd heard a lot of people say the same thing, that the the neckline sort of stood up like this, like away from you, and the slight adjustment that she had made to the pattern piece just ensures that that doesn't happen, um, and I think it's got a really nice fit around the neckline, so I'm really, really pleased that I just followed that tutorial that Andrea had done, and I have to say that the alteration to the pattern pieces itself is so slight, it's unbelievable the difference that it makes to just the small alteration that you have to make to that pattern piece, so don't feel scared if you have been put off making this pattern because of the alteration that you perhaps would need to make for the neckline because it's dead, dead simple. So do check out her video and I will link that in the description box below. So I just went with the standard neckline. As you can see, it's just sort of a boat neck style, roundish neckline. So it's about that wide. Um, and then you just top stitch around it. And I've just used a zigzag stitch for that. There are two other versions. So you can have one with a knot and one with a bow. And they're really, really pretty. But I just wanted to do a test version first just to see how the fit of the top was on me. So I just went for, with the straightforward neckline. But I really do like this top. I have to say, I think it's probably the quickest jersey top that I've ever made. It's so simple to put together. Um, and the way that it's constructed, it's just really, really quick to do. So I just did this whole top in one evening. And to be honest, I did it on a Sunday evening where I was watching Andrea on one of her live sessions that she does on a Sunday evening. And then I started sewing this afterwards. So I'd already got it all cut out. So I started at eight o'clock and I think I'd finished it by 10 o'clock. So it took me a couple of hours, you know, and if you're a speedier sewer than I am, then you probably could do it within an hour, an hour and a half. Um, so it's got three quarter length sleeves and um, this is a cotton jersey that I've made it in. And I got this from Material Girl Laura. She's no longer trading her business anymore. Um, and I think I got this actually as a remnant when she was selling off some of her fabrics. Um, so I didn't have quite enough for a dress as I initially wanted to use for it. Um, but it's really suitable for this pattern. A cotton jersey is just perfect for it. Just the right amount of weight and stretch, I would say. I really like the colours in this fabric, but I'm not really happy with the design itself. And I'll show you why in a minute. I mean, you'll probably think I've been really silly, but um, the overall fit of the top, um, I found it came up a little bit big. So I made the size 10. And as I was following Andrea's video, she used three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And because I'd not printed out the instructions, I forgot that it was a five eighths of an inch seam allowance for this pattern. So I just went ahead and did three eighths of an inch as what 
as per what Andrew was doing. Um, so I found that it was a little bit big around the arms and, and especially under the arm section here, I had quite a bit of excess fabric. So I have since gone back in and gone down with my overlocker, down the sleeve seams and down the side seams just to bring it in a little bit. So I think next time I'll either do the size 10 again and do five eighths of an inch seam allowance or I'll just size down to the size eight and perhaps use three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm not really sure, I'm gonna see. I think it might depend on the stretch of the fabric as to what size it would be the most suitable. Um, so I'm happy with the fit overall now that I've taken in a little bit and I have to say that I really like the length of this top so I'll stand up so you can see. So it comes down to sort of my mid hip area so it doesn't sit too high and it's not too low um, so I really like that length and if you can see if I stand back the, the, the design of this fabric it goes in stripes and that's what I don't like about it. Now, if this fabric had have been a little bit more sort of all over the place and wasn't in a directional print, I suppose you would call it, because I had to make sure the flowers were all up the same way. Um, yeah, and I would have preferred it if they were just a little bit more scattered about, whereas <laughs> being in lines, it reminds me of, um, if you've ever watched the original um, film of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where they've got the wallpaper and I think it's got like fruits and it's going down in lines that you know they lick it <laughs> it reminds me of that wallpaper and now I can't like unsee that in my head so I really really love the top I'm definitely going to be making more I really want to make the bow version as per Andrea's tutorial that looks really really pretty I really do like this neckline um I think it's quite a flattering sort of shape and it's not too high um but I'm going to use, I think, either a stripy fabric or maybe a polka dot or something like that. Or if I do use a floral one, I don't want it in, in lines. I want it a little bit more all, all over the place. So that's the only thing I don't like about this top. Um, but I'll just, you know, still wear it with jeans and that kind of thing. So, yeah, really pleased with this one so far. Um, so I'll be making lots more in the future for sure. I think it's even a speedier so than the Tilly and the Buttons Coco, and that's saying something because that is a really quick jersey top to make. And I've made that numerous times. If you've um, been watching me for a while, you know that I have used that pattern to death. Um, so then the next thing that I finished, finally, <laughs> you'll be sick of seeing these, is the um, little pajama sets that I've made for Thomas and James. So this one is James's. Excuse the dirty marks on it, he's been wearing them. But for this one, I used the same fabric for the neckband. And I think that has worked out much better. Now, they don't give you a pattern piece for this um, neckline, but they give you the measurements to be able to, to cut it out. And I cut it out, a little pattern piece on a, you know, a bit of uh, baking paper, and um, that went in, no problem at all, and it fits perfectly around his, his neck. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Now, this particular pattern is called the Happy Holiday PJs which is like this. So you can see that they're full length sleeves and full length trousers. And it's a free pattern from the Sew Simple Home website. It's a really nice pattern to sew um, and it sews up really quickly. Now I altered it to obviously be short sleeves for the top and then for the bottoms, I just cut them so they're like shorts. Um, and I'm really happy with how they turn out. Now, the only thing I have found since I have finished them both for James and Thomas, and it's it fits exactly the same on each of them, is that the way I've cut the sleeves, I just sort of cut them shorter. I didn't really do any particular measurement at all. Um, but when they wear them, they stick out like wings because it's a raglan sleeve. And so the way it kind of comes off your shoulder, obviously you don't have the seam line of a shoulder seam there. And because it's coming from over here, it because I think I've cut it too short. So it's kind of sticking out like wings. I'm gonna insert a photo actually of Thomas wearing his and see if you can see what I mean on it that um, they just stick out a bit weird. So I, I have got a friend that has requested or asked if I would make um, a pair of these pajamas for her daughter, which I've said, yes, I'll definitely go ahead and do. But obviously I wanna make sure that I get that um, sleeve correct. So, I don't know if I need to lengthen the sleeves, but I have since found another pajama pattern, which is free. Um, I can't remember where it was from now. I haven't printed it off as yet, but I'll, if I can remember where it was from, I'll link it in the description box below for you as, as, as well as this pattern. Oh, I just can't even get my words out. Um, but yeah, so that 
isn't a raglan it's just a normal sort of sleeve where you've got the seam here so I might use that one instead because I don't want to make one for a friend and then have the same situation <laughs> where it's sticking out because it does look a little bit girly on them um you know but it's fine because obviously they're just wearing it to bed they're not wearing it out as such but they've finally been done I've I mean it's taken me so long to finish those I think because I had such a issue with the neckline of Thomas's on this one because I used the rib um, and then I had to put the elastic in etc so yes they're all done anyway and I would definitely use that pattern again if I can just get the sleeve right but I may in the future make the long versions for both or all, all of the boys this goes from uh sizes 12 months to 12 years so that's a really generous um pattern for free so that's really good um and then the next thing I've been doing is another work in progress um and this was for Minerva now I've had this fabric for so long and I've managed to catch up with all my Minerva makes. So this was the last one that's been outstanding. And it's the Nina Lee Camden Pinafore. So I'm doing the Pinafore version this time. I have made the skirt in the past um, and I really wanted to do the Pinafore version. Now it is fully lined, so I haven't got any lining fabric as yet, but I've started sewing the outer pieces together. So I'll just show you as far as I've got basically. So that's the fabric that I've got. It's a lovely wine colored denim. And it is got stretch has got stretch to it so i've just sewn the two front skirt pieces together so, as it's got a um a seam down the middle there and i i think you top stitch that may or may not top top stitch it um and then this is the the bodice I have found that this fabric does fray a little bit as well actually and um, so that's the bodice now i i had quite a lot of problems i don't know if you can see with the princess seams it, they just seem to pull I mean when I'm wearing it it might not be as noticeable but um, they do look a bit puckered but they're not there isn't anything caught I have I have pressed it with my um, tailor's ham but I just I'm finding that they don't they don't look like they sit very well and I have to say I did struggle to get those to fit usually with princess seams I manage fine with them but for this particular pattern or maybe this fabric just didn't seem to want to go in or ease in very well um but anyway so that's the bodice sort of done for the outer section so again like I say I've got to get the lining fabric um and then I've got the two back skirt pieces where you have a dart down the center down the center of the each panel um so I've done those so that's as far as I've got with that so I just um had an evening just doing a few little bits for that one so I just need to get the lining fabric and then start doing that bit so I can actually start sewing it up properly together um, and hopefully get that finished because they've been waiting for it for quite a long time but on the note of Minerva I've actually had a couple more fabrics um, delivered from them for blog posts and um, the first one that I've had sent to me um, was something that I requested actually in December last year so I didn't even know that I was getting it because I never had any confirmation of them receiving my request for it and it just turned up out of the blue the other day but it's absolutely gorgeous now I think it's a viscose crepe if I recall and it's absolutely gorgeous this is a lovely navy polka dot fabric um and I just love the big polka dots it's it's a little bit different to anything that I've sewn with before um I've I've had polka dot things in the past but they've always been on a small scale so this is really quite a large one um and at the time of me ordering it back in December last year I can't even remember what project I had in mind so I've got a blank canvas with this one basically so I need to have a think about what what pattern I want to use for it um now I have ordered three meters so I've got quite a bit of fabric there um let's have a look Okay, so it's uh, it's that wide. So I should have quite a bit to play with. Yeah, so I'm not really sure. I might do the Wilder gown um, by Friday Pattern Company because I think that might be quite a nice one to do because it's quite a bold print and then you won't lose too much of the polka dots. There's not too many seam lines for the, um, for the Wilder gown. So... Yeah, I was really, it was quite a surprise to receive that fabric, but I really like it. So I think definitely the wild are going for that one. Um, yeah, that's that. And then another fabric that I recently ordered, which has turned up, 
completely different again to any other fabrics that I've used in the past and I think this is called a jacquard fabric and I've again ordered no it's brocade sorry beg your pardon brocade fabric which I've ordered three meters for because I'm planning on using this to make the sew over it Betty dress and I've again not made that pattern in, in the past but this fabric is absolutely beautiful so I'm planning on making this to wear to a wedding if I ever go to one so it's really really kind of iridescent shiny kind of fabric and as you can see it's got these lovely paisleys all over it now it says it's pink but it is definitely got sort of a reddy orangey feel to it I would say um a bit of a corally pink color in it absolutely love it um I think that will make a really really lovely sew over it Betty dress especially if I buy like a petticoat to go underneath the skirt to make it quite poofy you know really kind of 50s style dress with um a very I don't know funky design on this fabric I really really like it it's again completely out of my comfort zone it's going to be it's quite out there isn't it really um not something that I've used before so I think I'm going to wash this at 30 degrees um but I think it's the type of fabric I would say that when you have a dress like that that you would spot clean it so I don't know should I wash it or should I just leave it as is definitely needs overlocking if I um if I wash it because it's fraying as you can see um yeah so that was um nice fabric that i'd ordered and then i've had some more fabric from felicity fabrics which has been gifted to me in return for a blog post as well so this is going to be for my next blog and um, this is one of their newer fabrics that they've got on their website at the moment and it's a cotton poplin with a white background and these lovely ditzy florals all over it really really like that um, and it's quite lightweight as well so that's been washed ready to go and for that one I'm planning to make the Megan Nielsen Darling Rangers dress so this is the version that I'm planning on making but I'm going to do it sleeveless um, I've seen Sally from Life um, from Secret Life of a Seamstress uh, she has made so many of these dresses and I've been banging on about making one for ages um, because she's made some lovely versions and it really has inspired me to make one and she's done a sleeveless version so I've taken inspiration from her to finally make one and I've chosen this fabric to make it out of so it'd be like a nice lightweight summer dress um, I'm not planning on lining this fabric so if it turns out that you can see my underwear underneath it I'm just going to wear a, a little like skin coloured slip or something underneath um, and I will make sure that when I do this sleeveless that I bring the sleeve area in here um you know around that arm because in the past when I've made things sleeveless I've just left it as is and sometimes it's a little bit wide so I think you need to take into account that there is seam allowance there um to take away so I think she does she did talk about that on one of her videos so I'll, I'll make sure that I do that so yeah that's the version I'm going to make which is a little bit more close fitting and um yeah, looking forward to making that so that's gonna be my next blog post for felicity fabrics then um and then what else am i doing so i'm doing another collaboration with um, angela from devon thread tales and we're actually making another jumpsuit which we weren't planning on doing like another jumpsuit following the one that we'd already done but it's just that i actually did a make nine list at the beginning of this year and i haven't set, uh, like shared it with you all because um i wasn't really sure if i was going to stick to it to be honest just because things have just still been a bit up in the air haven't they this year um so anyway we have both decided to do this jumpsuit um because it was on our list to make and it was on my make nine list and I'd already got fabric for it as well and Angela had already got some fabric lined up hers so we are making the Tilly and the Buttons Marigold jumpsuit and again it's going to turn out completely different to each other's because mine is a really patterned fabric hers is very plain and um, she's using a double gauze mine is a viscose I believe I think it's a viscose or a cotton lawn I think I'm sure it's a viscose actually and um, she's doing the neckline where it's going to be straight because it has a sweetheart neckline and I'm just going to leave it as the sweetheart neckline just because I quite fancy something different and um, so the fabric I am using I got from bobbins and buttons last year and it's called eastern delight jardinia or gardenia by Rachel Parker for Dashwood Studio. So this is the fabric that I am using. You may be familiar with it because I have seen it around quite a bit in different colorways. So this one's the navy background. Um, so it's quite 
a funky kind of print. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that turns out. Now, last night I was on my sewing Zoom with Angela and we both cut out the pattern um, together because we were a little bit behind with them um, sorting out, <laughs> getting it done, base started. And it was quite funny actually, because last night when we started cutting it out, we hadn't even read any of the instructions, looked at anything that we need for making this jumpsuit. And you do need to use interfacing in quite a few places so you interface the facing for the front and the facing for the back of the bodice but then you have to cut some interfacing strips to interface other areas of the jumpsuit which we hadn't taken into account and so I have decided to order this two centimeter um it's iron-on interfacing tape which I've used in the past I've just ordered it from Amazon and I think you get 10 meters in a pack so I'm going to do that because I couldn't be bothered to measure out all this um, and cut out the um, the fabric, you know, the interfacing strips. So I've ordered that. So that should be arriving on Friday. Um, and then you also need an invisible zip. I think it's about a seven inch or nine inch invisible zip. And I, I might have one in my stash, but otherwise I need to nip off to Dunelm. And then you need elastic as well. So we, we were sat there last, like giggling because we cut it out and we're like, right, what can we start on then? You know, how far can we get with this? And then we were like, well, actually we need this, this and this, and we haven't got any of it. And we were like, oh, we're not very prepared. Um, so we're hoping to get that sewn up through this month of July and then do a video obviously sharing our makes again and she'll also include it in her makes video as will I once I get another makes video uploaded so that will be our collab um, and then Julia from Bobbins and Buttons she has recently released a brand new pattern called the Jane dress and it's a pinafore style dress that I was lucky enough to pattern test um, earlier this year now I do pattern test a lot for Julia at Bobbins and Buttons and I really do enjoy that process um, and this is my version so it's a slip-on sort of pinafore style dress but it does have closures at the top here so I've used just some buttons and they are functional and you will see that mine has a seam down the back here now that shouldn't be there. It was purely because I didn't have enough fabric, so I had to put a seam down the back. Um, so it's got a facing at the back there, as you can see, and there is a front facing as well. And it's a lovely A-line style, sort of shift pinafore dress, I would say, because it's, um, it's very straight, but it's A-line. So it's perfect for my figure because I don't get on very well with shift dresses because I always get excess fabric pooling at the bottom of my back. Uh, where I, I need to do a sway back adjustment and I perhaps could have done with doing one for this dress um, because I do have a little bit of fabric sat there but it's not too bad on this one because it is A-line. There are a couple of variations for this dress and the one that I've gone with is where it's got a seam line across here and then you have these pockets that are sort of incorporated within that seam line and I really like that style. There is another one where I think you can sew patch pockets on the front. Um, and this dress did cut, turn out quite long. So I have done um, quite a deep hem on it, if I can show you. Uh, so that's the hem on the inside, as you can see. So it's probably about two inches, I would say. Two inch hem there, so I just made it a little bit short. I think I took it just to above knee length. So what I'll do is I'll insert a photo of me wearing that. Um, as I've not got it on today because it's uh, pouring down with rain as we speak. I've been for my walk this morning and managed to just about skip the rain. We did have to shield under a, a tree for a little bit, me and my friend. Um, but it was really hot walking. I have to say it's really muggy today. It's one of those d days where the weather doesn't know what it's doing. <laughs> one minute it's boiling hot sunshine, the next minute it's pouring down with rain and then it just goes all muggy and hot and bleh. So uh, yeah, that's my version of the drain, the drain, the Jane pinafore dress then really really like that and I will definitely make um, more. I'd like to make a denim one actually to wear um, over the top of a stripy Breton top and my mum would like me to make one for her as well so she wants me to make one in a gingham fabric so I'm on the lookout for some gingham fabric to make one for my mum um, and that should be quite easy to fit her. She's bigger than me but she's the same shape as me so A-line is going to be perfect so yeah really happy with that dress and um, it's on sale now. So before I show you the last thing that I've been getting on with this week, um, I just wanted to quickly show you something that I am planning on making. Now, being a Felicity Fabrics blogger, 
they always send us through little fabric swatches of new fabrics that are, they're coming into stock with, which I've put on to their website. Um, and you get these little sort of swatches about that size, just have a look at the fabric, have a feel of it. And we just put our feedback back to them. And I've been keeping a lot of them. The boys tend to play around with them and use them for things. But I decided to do a little patchwork sort of <laughs> design um, of some of the fabrics that I had received. So some of these will you will recognise because they are on their website at the moment. Um, and I've had this magazine ages. Gosh, I mean, I don't even know what year it was. Um, a long, long time ago. Let's just put it that way. Um, oh, there we are. June 2016. That's how old this magazine is. Um, so it's just Sewing World magazine. I don't actually think I've seen it since I bought this one, uh, which I got from WH Smiths in the UK. And um, it's just got a few sort of sewing projects in there, not really particularly dressmaking, but um, it's got this little patchwork purse on the front. So I've had a look inside and it gives you the templates. And um, I have started following the instructions on how to put this little sort of purse bag thing together. So that will be the front. So as you can see on the front there, that's the um, the clasp as it comes over. So that's what that is going to be. And I thought it's a nice way to use up some of those fabrics just so they don't go to waste really. Um, and I'm gonna make that little purse and I'll probably just put some makeup or something in it or some sewing bits, that kind of thing. So that was just one thing that I just randomly did out of the blue one evening, decided to piece those together. Um, so lastly then, what I've been getting up to this week is finally making the So Different long line jacket. So I'll insert that stock photo of what it looks like on the pattern cover. And then I'll quickly show you literally the little set of instructions that you get with it. It's a really nice, simple jacket coat to make. So if you're new to um, sewing coats, it's definitely a good one to start with. It's unlined, so you don't have to line it. Um, and it's straight lines, most of it. So you don't, you know, there's nothing really too hard. There's no setting sleeves, it's raglan sleeves. So it's really easy to construct. I wouldn't say it's suitable for a beginner sewist, um, but it's definitely suitable for somebody who wants to enhance their skills, especially if you want to start getting into coat making because I want, I'm starting to go down that route. Um, I made the coats for the twins beginning of the year. I did a coat for Harry and now I've started doing this one and I've got a few more that I want to do as well. So it's just easing me in <laughs> slightly. So this is unlined, so it's a good place to start. And the instructions that you get are really quite basic. So I've not used this company before, so they're completely new to me. Um, and I will say that some of the instructions are a little sparse in areas. So it definitely won't be suitable for beginners if you need your hand holding quite a lot of the way through. Um, so it does provide you with the body measurements for the size that you need to make. And then it gives you the finished garment measurements in this little table up here. Now they're in centimeters. Um, so you have to convert them into inches if you work in inches like I do, but it does give you the body measurements in centimetres and in inches. So I just converted them for two sizes that I was debating on using and wrote them on the back. So I was debating on making the size 10 or the size 12, and I was comparing the finished garment measurements to my body measurements. And I was sort of, I don't know, I was stuck between what size I wanted to make because I was a little bit worried that I'd, that the size 12 was going to be too generous and the size 10 might have been a little bit tight and I thought I might have to grade between two sizes. Um, but then I found on Instagram, somebody else had made it and I just messaged her and, and just said, you know, how did you find the fit? And she said she found it quite generous. So I decided to go with the size 10 um, and I'm really glad that I did that. So I'll show it you in a moment. I haven't finished it. I'll just show you as far as I've got with it, um, but it's near enough finished. So the fabrics that you can use for this jacket are medium to heavyweight structured fabrics such as jacquards, twills, denims, velvet, linen, boiled wool and furnishing fabrics. So canvas and things like that would be perfect as well. Um, and I thought as it is a unlined jacket that I was going to bias bind all of the 
internal seams you know to make it look pretty on the inside but the fabric I've used has actually got quite a nice design on the reverse of the fabric so I actually haven't done that I've just overlocked and it looks absolutely fine so the instructions then as you can see they're quite um simple I would say there's not a lot of instructions you get three pages you know for a coat so not a lot um, and there were a few areas that I felt were missing so for instance when you insert the pockets, you usually um, understitch the seat to the seam allowance to make sure that the pockets roll in and you don't get the sort of inside of the pocket flipping out. Um, and there were some areas where I thought they could have told you how to finish the seams and when to finish them. Um, so that wasn't included. So yeah, quite basic instructions, but if you've made a few garments and you kind of get used to doing these construction processes, then you, I think you would know to do them. So I found that I was like, right, I'm gonna do that here and I'm gonna do that there, even though it wasn't written in the instructions. So you just need to have your sort of wits about you. Um, but I'm so happy with how this jacket has turned out. So I went with the size 10. In actual fact, shall I just get it? Let's just get it. So it's not completely finished. So you'll see I've got pins and things in it. So this is a lovely, jacquard fabric I think or brocade fabric which I got from Bobbins and Buttons so this is for my blog post for Julia at Bobbins and Buttons um, I'm so behind with getting this to her but it's just been one of those years which you know things have just got in the way um, and I was a little bit worried about sewing with this fabric but in actual fact it's it was so nice to sew with so on the inside you can see that it's got a really nice design on the reverse so you could have actually had used the fabric either way you wanted um and i went with the the more sort of bluey tone on the outer and i'm really happy with that it's a beautiful jacket um it's got raglan sleeves as you can see here it's got a lovely little sort of i don't know what collar you would call that just a little stand-up collar um, and then it's got a empire line waistline. I don't know if you can see that. There's a seam line here on the front. And then it's just one piece on the back. So there's no seam line on the back whatsoever. That's just one piece. But as you can see, it's got the raglan uh, seam lines there. And then it's got these lovely deep pockets and they are really big. Like your hand goes all the way in. It's such a beautiful jacket. And then it's got um, quite a deep hem. I might have to stand up to show you that. So quite a deep um, hem on there and you mitre the corners. Um, and that was uh, initially a bit of a head scratching moment reading the instructions, but I, I kind of got my head around it. Um, but I'm so happy with how this has turned out. Now, I've taken <laughs> a mirror selfie, so I will insert that. It's not the greatest picture, I'm really sorry. Um, but I'm really happy with how it's looking. And so I went with the size 10. The seam allowance throughout is 1.5 centimetres, so five eighths of an inch. And I found that it just came up just a little bit big where the back was sticking out a little bit. So all I did was I took an extra quarter of an inch off the seam um, down the sleeves and down the side seams, incorporating the pockets as well. So I just a quarter of an inch on each side so I did that on both sides and uh, that just brought it in that little bit more but I think if I just size down to the size eight I think it might have been a little bit tight across my shoulders you know across the back so I don't think that I needed to go down a size I just needed to use a little bit of a bigger seam allowance but I used the 1.5 centimeter seam allowance throughout everywhere else and that was fine so I'll quickly slip it on for you but I've just at the moment got the um the inner collar pinned I need to hand sew that down it does actually tell you to um stitch in the ditch but I'm going to hand sew it because I think that will look a bit nicer and again with the um actual bottom of the of the hem it doesn't actually tell you what to do with that that's one step that's missing would you believe it doesn't tell you how to finish the um the hem but I'm not going to top stitch that down I'm going to hand sew that as well because I don't want any stitching on the outside of the jacket itself so I'm going to pop it on just so you can and I'll see if I can stand back so you can see but it's a lovely fit it's going to look really funny with what I'm wearing but uh, I, I'm planning on wearing it with a plain dress underneath um, as like a an evening jacket so I'll just stand back so you can see that it's designed to just be open so it comes down to sort of 
mid thigh and yeah you just have it open so you don't close it or anything like that and I brought it in so the back is a little bit more flush to my back which is nice and then it's got these big deep pockets look how big they are lose my hand in there um, and then the inside you've got a facing and um, these big pockets which I've kind of I've slotted behind the um, the facing and I think I am just going to hand tack just here to stop those pockets coming out because it's quite nice to have them inside the facing so it's hidden but yeah I'm really pleased with it and it uh, I have to say that um, it needed pressing quite a lot so it was the first time that I had the opportunity to use my tailor's clapper um, which I got from Guthrie and Garney as a Christmas present last year and it made such a difference I couldn't believe it with uh, pressing the seams pressing especially down this section here it's made that really really flat and also I have to say it doesn't tell you to understitch when you put the facing on and I have done that all the way down I've understitched down here so that it stops it from creeping out but you do sew the um it to the waistline seam so that stops it creeping out anyway but using that tailor's clapper has made such a difference yeah it's made it really crisp so I've just got to um hem the sleeves hand sew the hem and hand sew the collar is basically finished so I will do a separate video all about this jacket anyway um for the bobbins and buttons blog um so I can go into a lot sort of more detail about it I suppose and show it pro off properly now I don't actually have anything to wear underneath it that's plain because I don't think you can wear anything that's patterned underneath it because this is quite a busy print itself so for Christmas, I had some of this lovely blue Pontaroma fabric from um, Andrea Beyond the Pink Door. I initially had this lined up to make the um, Sew Over It um, Heather dress, but I've decided that I'm actually going to use this now to make a Teal in the Buttons Coco dress. I absolutely love that dress. It's just a lovely, simple, A-line sort of 60s style dress, and I think it will go underneath this jacket really well I think the colours are going to go so I plan to have yeah just the plain dress underneath so I think that'd be really nice so that's my plan so just the um straightforward round neckline uh, with three quarter length sleeves and I always add two inches onto the bottom of the cocoa dress because it does come up quite short and I always just add it onto the bottom rather than the shorten and lengthen lines because when I in the past when I've added it to the short and lengthened lines it lengthened the the sort of bodice area and then it clung to my hips whereas if you just add it onto the hem it just extends that a-line shape at the bottom which is much better for me so that's what I'm going to do just a cocoa dress with that fabric and I'm going to sew that up really soon because I want to wear it underneath that coat when I do the photos for the blog so that's what I'm going to do over the next week is get that done that's for sure so I'm really, really happy with how that jacket has turned out. I love the fit. I love the fabric. It's really different. Um, and I showed it to my husband and I was really surprised that he actually really liked it. Because I mean, sometimes when I have stuff that's a little bit different, he's a little bit like, oh, I don't really know about that. But no, he, he really liked it. Um, so that was great. And I love the inside of the, uh, of the fabric as well. It's a lovely design. So that was why I didn't use bias binding. I have just overlocked the edges and I... I think that's fine because it doesn't like take away from the um the design of the fabric yeah so it's been a really really nice sew so it's I would say even though the instructions are slightly sparse it is a really nice easy sew and the coat sort of comes together really nicely so I've been doing that over the last few days I've really enjoyed sewing that up so that's been my two weeks basically um so there was just another couple of things that I wanted to talk to you about and I have written them down here. Oh, actually there was another thing that I made which I haven't got to hand because I've given them now to my sister-in-law and brother-in-law because their birthdays are two days apart but I made a couple of birthday cards for them and it was in the sort of free motion machine embroidery style like Poppy Treffery. So I used the um, templates that we'd had for the spring embroidery club and I've made a couple of cards so I'll insert a photo of the cards because I really really like those so I hope they did too um 
yeah and I will I will show you how I do my free motion embroidery I'm really sorry that I've not done a video on that yet but I will um and what else is there to talk to you about so yeah Poppy Treffery then she has got a autumn embroidery club coming up very soon so it's um, available to purchase now um, so basically there are two options so you can buy the material pack um, so you pre-order that and you can do that until the 18th of July so today is the 7th of July so you've got until the 18th of July to order the material pack so basically you get um, all of the templates and then they send you out a pack of materials which go with each of the projects basically um, and then there is an option to just do the online subscription which is what I did so you just basically pay for the templates for each project and the instructions that come with it and then you also have access to the videos where she shows you how to make the uh, projects up and also you, there is a live q a every week and there's a facebook group which you all go on like a private facebook group if you're part of the embroidery club so i think i will do the online subscription again so that is open until the 19th of, Sept of september to subscribe to that um because i quite liked ordering my own fabrics even though it probably worked out a little bit more expensive doing it that way i just found that then i had materials left over for me to either you know do the projects again or make other things and use the materials for other things as well so um for me that worked out better so i'm going to do that again so that does work out slightly cheaper um when you do the initial payment of it because with the material packs it is quite expensive but if you want everything to hand straight away ready for the projects then that's the way to go about it whereas i was just ordering as i kind of went along really um but yeah for me that worked so that just to let you know that that is now available online on their website so i'll link it all in the description box below for you anyway um so i think that's everything with regards to sewing and crafting and that kind of thing um little update on the rabbits then for you um, they were booked in last week to have the snip as it were um but unfortunately it didn't go ahead which was really quite frustrating and um, because we were wanting to get it done as soon as possible so thank you so much for all your lovely comments on my last video when i was saying that they were fighting and it was it'd been quite stressful and um, we are still having them separated at the moment because they need to be separate until they have this um, procedure done so basically I took them in on Thursday last week and then I was just about to go for a walk with my friend and I got a phone call from the vets to say that they'd heard one of the rabbits sneezing and asked me questions, you know, as, with regards to does he do it often um, and does any snot come out when he does it and that kind of thing. And I was honest and said, yes, he has sneezed on occasion and yes, snot does come out, but not every single time, um, you know, but I didn't, it wasn't ever anything that I was concerned about. And so she said, well, they'd listen to his heart, listen to his chest, they weren't concerned. But because of putting rabbits under general anaesthetic, there's a risk anyway with them being such small animals that um, they didn't want to risk it. And so they would prefer for them to go on to antibiotics for seven days, both of them, as a precaution before going through with the procedure. So I had to go and pick them back up, bring them home. They've been having these antibiotics. Um, in a solution that I've had to syringe into their mouth every morning and evening which hasn't been the easiest thing to do because they, they don't want to open their mouth they don't want this this medicine um, so we've been doing that and tomorrow which it will be Thursday again it will be a week of them having it and I've got to take them back in for a checkup um, and then I can have them booked in for the operation so it's just been a bit of a nightmare really because we were hoping to have had it done and dusted by now um, and so at the moment, yeah, we've been keeping them separate. They've been cracking on with uh, just sharing the hut, sharing the run, you know, just swap them over. And then we've been putting them side by side in the outside run. And, you know, they've not been too bad because like, at one point they were like trying to get each other through the um, the mesh that was in between them. But they've not been doing that. So I think they've just gotten used to the setup that we've got at the moment. Um, so hopefully tomorrow when I take them in, we can have the all clear and just go ahead with it. But to be honest, he has still been sneezing. And I'll tell you one thing I have noticed. It's when we put him on the grass. So I don't know if he's like got hay fever or if he's allergic to the grass or something. It's really strange, you know. And yes, snot does come out occasionally, but not, not every time. But I certainly don't think he's got a cold, which is what they thought it was. Anyway, and poor Butter, he's been having this antibiotics. He hasn't even got a cold. So, but she just said that they had to treat both as a precaution. So... Yeah, 
I don't know. Anyway, so they're going in tomorrow. So fingers crossed it won't be too much longer and then they can be put back together, hopefully. So that's that. Um, yeah, and I think there was just one other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, which is completely not related to sewing or anything. Um, but my friend told me about this app, right? And it's called Too Good To Go. And you download it, it's, it's a free app. And it's basically where you enter your details and your location and um, you can find places that are getting rid of food, uh, which is too good to put in the bin, but not good enough to sell in the shop anymore. So there's various different um, places where you can get these food parcels from. And I think they vary in price, but I think it's a maximum of like five pounds. And one which is local to me um, does baked goods and desserts and puddings and that kind of thing. So you put in, you, well, you have a look in on the morning of what is available in your area at different locations. And this particular place where they do these puddings and things, um, I paid for a lucky dip box, basically. You don't know what you're getting. And so I paid 4 99 and then I had to go and pick it up in a time slot, like two till 4.30, I think it was. And I went and, and got my little parcel and had two big brownies, hand, you know, homemade brownies. Um, and then there was three boxes of cheesecakes, which, and they all come frozen. So you do need to make sure you've got room in your freezer. But for five pounds, you know, for getting all this delicious puddings, because my boys like to have pudding after their dinner and stuff. Um, I was over the moon and, and I've been, like my friend told me about it. She said, make sure you get the pudding one because they're so good. And I have to say the brownies were amazing. So, so nice. Um, and I think there's a few other places like Greg's and things where they get rid of sandwiches, salads, pastries. Um, then I think there's a carvery down the road from me. They are, they like get rid of, I don't know, like meats, sausages, Yorkshire puddings and that kind of thing. So I've not, I've not ordered one of those because I don't know if I would use that. Um, but the pudding one is definitely worth it that's a really popular one as well so you have to sort of get in there quick I think there's only like maybe five bags but I know Sainsbury's do it so you know getting rid of food that they can't put out on the shelves anymore you don't know what you're getting but that's quite <laughs> it's quite exciting isn't it really but I thought I'd tell you about that app so if you want to go and download it and see what you can get in your area yeah you never know you might have some nice treats for the weekend but um yeah that's basically everything that I wanted to share with you today been a bit rambly a bit all over the place but I just wanted to share everything that I've been getting up to um, and I will be getting a makes video uploaded shortly I think because I think over the next few weeks I will have a few makes to share and I don't obviously want to leave it as long as I did last time where I'm having a massive long video of all the makes that I've done um, so actually this Friday the boys finish school for the school holidays we finish earlier than everywhere else in the uk and um, so we but then they start back earlier so they think they go back on the 25th of august and um, so a little bit earlier than everywhere else but i'm looking forward to having them at home for six weeks i say that now i'll probably be tearing my hair out by the end of the six weeks um but it'd be nice just to not have to rush out the door every day um we haven't got a holiday booked this year we were lucky enough to go away last year um, but this year everywhere's booked up because obviously people haven't been able to go abroad so they've booked everywhere in the UK so it's been really busy um, but we might get a week away in October because uh, our half term again in October is slightly earlier than everywhere else so yeah we'll just wait and see but I'm just excited that I think the weather's supposed to warm up a little bit more in, in mid-July so that'd be nice spend some time in the garden go out for picnics with friends and that kind of thing so yeah just a nice chilled out time so Anyway, I shall leave it here for today. All being well, I shall have a video for you next week. See how the, week's, <laughs> the week goes with having the children at home. But I hope you're all doing really well. Thank you very much for watching today. Take care and I shall see you again soon. Bye.